First tonight, it is going to be one of the most important first days of school for JCPS in decades. Will that new bus transportation plan work? Today, the superintendent and other JCPS leaders held a news conference of optimism. It is a major change after years of bus driver shortages. Today, Superintendent Dr. Marty Polio reviewed the transportation overhaul that made it all possible. WHAS 11's Ian Hardwood actually talked to him about those changes today. So Ian, big question, when are they expecting the last drop off to happen on Thursday? That first drop off or last drop off rather happening on the first day of school, they're eyeing a 730 time for that as that last stop, if, if that proves true, would be two and a half hours improvement over the previous year. JCPS is also trying to get students to school on time, though that's come with some sacrifices. It's impossible to get kids to school on time when you have more routes than bus drivers. That was said last year after the busing disaster, but instead that's Superintendent Marty Polio now days away from the redo for this start of school. By cutting buses to some magnet schools like Mail and Manual, JCPS is starting to balance the equation of an efficient transportation system. Other changes include fewer school start times and a return to handmade routes after dropping the AI tool Alpha route the district previously used. We just can't say from an outside company that this is the most efficient thing if we're losing bus drivers or having issues with students in schools because we're not mirroring. Which means the same bus in the morning and the afternoon which we're very proud of. We have increased technology on all of our buses this year. Uh, they'll be utilizing increased GPS, increased cameras across the buses, turn by turn navigation. During the overhaul, thousands of students either had to find a ride or change schools because of cuts. However, with 54 TARC drivers still in training to become JCPS drivers, the district is considering route restorations. The school board will officially decide at its August 20th meeting. At the meeting, the board will also decide if students who pulled out of magnet schools due to the cuts will be able to transfer back if the restoration goes through. Our drivers feel confident, our compound coordinators feel confident, our routers feel confident, we feel confident. As the district projects confidence, they're also predicting earlier finishes to each day. Practice runs have drivers finishing around 6.20 p.m inside of our schools what's happening is better than it's ever been and just very proud of that work. Whether students can get there on time and home before dark is the big test this year. Now a judge is still deciding whether or not the parent lawsuit can force JCPS to restore all magnet school bus routes. Their attorney said today parents and guardians are now frantically looking for alternate forms of transportation for their children. Now the majority of families still with bus access, the district has new resources for them this year. Take a look. Here's several ways you can keep up with JCPS transportation. You can download the Edgelog Light app to track buses, visit Bus Teller, the district's transportation website, or call the 502-485-RIDE hotline with any questions you have. Ian, thank you very much. Well, time is ticking for Kamala Harris to announce her running mate. Reports tonight are focusing on tomorrow morning for the big decision. ABC News said late today that she had not made the choice yet, citing a source. Sources are telling ABC News as well that Harris met one on one this weekend in Washington with the top contenders, including the Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, Minnesota Governor Tim Walls and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro but still has not made that decision. A new CBS News poll released yesterday gives Harris a slight edge in the race with Donald Trump making a statistical dead heat, but an improvement over where Joe Biden stood just two weeks ago. And on Good Morning America this morning, the former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi talked specifically about her role in urging Joe Biden to step aside. The only person that I spoke to about this was the president. Other people called me about what their views were about it. And, but I rarely even returned a call, much less initiated one. And back to that impending VP pick. After that rally in Pennsylvania, Harris will blitz six more battleground states in five days with her running mate introducing them to the nation. So now to the latest on Kentucky Governor Randy Bashir. Today he spoke in front of a large crowd of lawmakers in Louisville meeting here from across the country. But will Andy Bashir be the final pick for vice president? WHAS 11 senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez and photojournalist Alyssa Newton are in Frankfurt today. And they are outside the governor's mansion uh, where they've been all day long. Uh, what's the mood in Frankfurt there tonight, Isaiah? Yeah, Doug Shea, we're actually a little farther out at this point. You actually see the state capitol behind me. We're a little elevated. 
I do want to mention some of those reports that we've seen uh, recently from other outlets, CNN, Reuters, just being two, mentioning that Vice President Kamala Harris reportedly is down to her final two choices. That's Minnesota Governor Tim Walls and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. But regardless, we've been in here in Frankfurt pretty much all day on the off chance that Governor Bashir comes right back into the mix because as I'm told by someone who knows him well and knows politics well, it's really not over until we get that final decision. Speculation reaching a high outside the Kentucky governor's mansion as black SUVs with tinted windows like this one leave the property. At this point, Andy Bashir's every move is analyzed as he remains in the conversation as a potential running mate for Vice President Kamala Harris. Bashir was in Louisville Monday morning, speaking at a summit for the National Conference of State Legislatures. Andy Bashir is, is still under consideration. Former Louisville Congressman John Yarmuth, a friend of Bashir's, offering his take to us as Harris's decision is imminent. And Andy certainly has the vitality that I think would appeal to a, a, a younger, younger voter in the country. Bashir's social media paper trail has been relatively scarce since Friday, with a few exceptions. On Monday morning, posting a video with the caption reading, I'm a pro-union governor, just a day after the UAW's president on network TV called Bashir his favorite for Harris's VP spot. Over the weekend, the governor posting this photo with his son at a baseball game in Louisville, as well as this picture from a service at First Christian Church in Frankfurt. Have you been keeping up with this whole frenzy or have you been trying to <laughs> keep your distance? I think it's hard not to. <laughs> As we waited for updates, we chatted with Les Greenman, co-owner of Frankfurt's Broadway Clay, just down the street from the state capitol. It would be nice to have, you know, a Kentuckian in such prominent position. And guys, the former congressman who I spoke with, John Yarmouth, of course, we all know him well mentioned that just because the three finalists met with the vice president in D.C. yesterday, reportedly, it doesn't mean that Governor Andy Bashir could have met with her a different day or say virtually, we do know he'll be in Chicago. He's actually speaking in the next 10, 15 minutes or so at a private fundraising event in Chicago. But as we know it, it is closed off to the public and to media. It is a private event. Doug Shea. Well, Isaiah, it's been uh, two weeks of a lot of speculation, really no facts about the process at all, but for the governor, it has certainly vaulted him into the national spotlight, whether or not he gets that job, uh, as we may learn tomorrow. Well, Doug, what it comes down to is I think there is still a question of whether, regardless of what happens, whether Andy Bashir comes back to the governor's seat to fill out his four years. We know this has been something that he has talked about. He'd only consider leaving if it was uh, to help Kentuckians in a different way. So could a cabinet position be something along those lines? We'll have to see. Of course, we'll ultimately Kamala Harris has to make her decision first. Doug Shea. Okay. All right, Isaiah, thank you very much there. Well, over the weekend, Kentucky Republicans went on the attack against Bashir's efforts to land the number two spot on the Democratic national ticket. The comments on full display during this year's fancy farm picnic. And the leader of the Democratic Party, the governor, I hear, is spending the weekend with Vice President Harris. I'd lot rather be with you guys. Speaking of Andy, they say he isn't here today because he's applying for another job. Desperate to reinvent him, his image from a wimpy choir boy to a liberal attack dog. Governor Bashir was invited to speak at the picnic this weekend. He did decline to attend this year's event. In the meantime, former President Donald Trump today speaking on this live stream with Internet streamer Aiden Ross. It's the latest attempt to appear on platforms targeting a younger demographic for Donald Trump. First, he challenged live pro golfer Bryson DeChambeau into a uh, golf contest in that uh, interview. And now he is sitting down with Ross, who is a video game streamer. Donald Trump touching on current events and the danger he believes America is heading toward. Our country's in tremendous danger, not only of, of stock market crashes or depressions or whatever it may be, it's a, a tremendous military danger. We have yeah. Israel's blowing up, the Middle East is blowing up, Russia's going wild with Ukraine. And we're going to Donald Trump expected to be in Montana later this week, and his running mate, J.D. Vance, expected to speak in Philadelphia on the same day that Vice President Kamala Harris will kick off her barnstorming tour.
Outside today, you certainly feel the heat, and really here you can even see it. Certainly a hazy afternoon. The weather impact we're talking about for you now is uh, really that. Hazy, hot, and humid. And of course, are, are we uh, seeing these hazy skies, Ben, because of uh, problems from wildfires again? No, it's just the really stuffy, uh, stagnant air. There's almost no wind out there, so we're just building up some pollutants out there. Uh, that hot sunshine baking on some of the pollutants and creating some ozone. So that's why we have an orange air quality alert for today and also for tomorrow as well. Um, just uh, hazy, hot, and humid. Uh, dog days of summer kind of weather. We're at 92, the heat index at 96, so with pretty much uh, full, for full force early August sunshine out there. Upper 80s to around 90 degrees, and that heat index climbing climbing up to the triple digits in a few spots like Shelbyville, Shepherdsville, Lanesville, and around Mitchell and Bedford in Indiana. And there you can see all that sun across the area. So this week contrasted last week a lot quieter, and we're going to have some fluctuations in the temperatures. We get a couple mostly dry fronts to move through. So another hot one tomorrow, then actually some relief on the way for Wednesday. It's going to be a hot evening out there. Low temperatures tonight in the 70s, rapidly rising temperatures tomorrow around 90 by noon and some mid 90s on the way for the afternoon. So quiet and just kind of humid tonight, low of 76 degrees and tomorrow 90 at lunchtime and that forecast high up to 96 with another air quality alert. We'll take a look at the back to school forecast plus the latest on Tropical Storm Debbie and if it will have any impact on our area coming up.